well, yeah. You know, it, I mean, I didn't know I wanted... Well, I knew I wanted to become an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. Oh. You get it. It was a very, you know, confusing time for me. But, you know, in uni, level 100, um, I mean, I started thinking of various kinds of businesses and all of that, you know. Fragrance, I've always loved fragrance, but I didn't see the business aspect of it, mm. you know. And especially um, selling fragrance, I didn't even know how to get fragrance to sell and all of that. I mean, I'll go to the mall mm -hmm. and then the, I'll have a few puffs of fragrances and I'll just move, you know. And anytime I get the chance, I go back there and say, I want to buy an I'll sample and go away. Do you own you one know? on your own? I mean, like fragrance? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I had a couple of cheap fragrances at the time, you know, mm -hmm. but it smelled good. My thing was about the smelling good, not the brand, you know, because right. obviously, I mean, yeah, fragrance is invisible fashion. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't tell someone you are wearing a Tom Ford or a Gucci. Right. You know, the only unless perceive the person you, knows. Yeah, unless the person knows, you know, mm. so they perceive you and based on how good the fragrance smells and then you know, they'll accord you with good smell. That respect. Yes, exactly. Mm. So Now, let's talk about how the journey all started exactly. with fragrance. Because, yes, you've delved into that conversation already. Yeah. But how did it all start for you to go mm. into fragrance? So, <laughs> so, you know, I'm that kind of person that always, once I put my mind to something, I'll make sure that, you know, I get ahead of it. I know the challenges are there. So, level 300, two things happened, mm. right? I went to class. And then my lecturer was teaching me how to comport myself. I mean, teaching us how to comport ourselves in an interview. Right. Wear black shoe and black belt. Immediately, I heard the statement. I was the, like, The statement, black shoe, black belt. Belt. <laughs> Level 300. I was like, what? Already, I've been reading some books and hearing a lot of 18 and 19-year-old boys doing great things in, the, in different industries in mm. the world. And I'm sitting here in Level 300. You are teaching me how to wear black belt and black shoe. It was a no-no for me. And so when my mind just goes off something, then, you know, it's like a wake-up call. Right. You know, I'm like, wow. So I asked the man, you know, he was my business lecturer. So I asked the question. I was like, but, sir, please, have you, do you own a business? And he says, no, but he knows everything about business. Mm. And I'm like, so, please, you've never operated a business before. He's like, yeah, I have not operated a business, but I consult for businesses. And then I'm thinking of doing, starting my own business. I felt the answer was so you know, down for me. All over the place. Yeah, I mean, you are now thinking of starting a business when you have been probably, uh, you know, lecturing for close to 30 years. Mm. What happened? You are now thinking of opening a business. You know, so it means that you know the theory, mm -hmm. but you don't have any experience on the practical. Mm -hmm. And for business, you learn on the job. Right. You get it. So that was like a wake-up call for me. And then at the time to... Um, I was the Communication Association President in Central University College. Okay. I like books a lot, you know, so I became the first, communi first Communication Association President. Smart chap, And it? then, I mean, something happened and, and then I was suspended okay. for a year. Oh, something happened? Yeah, you know, I became the President. We organized the opening of the association and then I was accused of, you know, um, sharing alcohol during, and I'm a Muslim, I don't even drink alcohol. Oh. You know, but I mean, I was like a scapegoat. But did you share that? No, I didn't. I don't drink alcohol, you know, mm. actually. You know, but I mean, it's all good. Um, so at the time, I looked at this as like a tragedy. But let me ask you yeah. this. Do you know who set you up? For oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know the person, you know. Have you know, at the time... Did you confront the person? I mean, he knows I know. But, you know, I don't take things to heart. And today, it has become a good thing. I feel that it was a blessing in disguise. You know, sometimes you plan, but God has a bigger plan for you. Mm. You see, so if I had maybe taken a personal and all of those things, probably I wouldn't be here. But that suspension actually pushed me to do what I am doing today. Right. So who am I to complain that, you know, I'm like Central should have probably, you know, suspended me for four years. You understand? <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. So but it was good because they thought the person who did that thought I wanted to become the Central University um, SRC president. Oh. And then he didn't stand a chance. You, you get it, okay. you know, because I was coming with fire. Okay. You know, so, I mean, that was the easiest way. But the only point that disappointed me was when my, um, uh, our association mm -hmm. uh, patron, someone that I actually pointed out to be voted for as our patron, mm -hmm. you know, had this report written about me and never confronted me until I met the disciplinary committee. 
And I was like, wow, this is so disappointed because whichever way, you are supposed to call me and mm -hmm. even lay the allegations that this is this and that and mm -hmm. all of that, you know? But nothing like that happened until I saw her, you know, during the, you know, uh, the disciplinary committee meeting. How did you feel? I mean, I, I felt let down because, I mean, I'm like, no, come on, this is so bad. Whichever way, you are supposed to even serve me with the report. Mm. And based on the report, I come answering questions. Right, but he But didn't. I just came and then you put a 15-page document in front of me. And then I saw people, you know, old men, old women. And then I was supposed to be given a big chair to sit down, judgment chair. Wow. To sit down and Did answer questions. Did your parents know about this? Yes, you know, I mean, my mom, emotional, crying, and all of those things. Your and, father? You know, because of my dad was, you know, a little strict and hard and all of them, I'm always the one bringing problems. So this is another problem you are bringing, you know? Mm. But I had to call him and explain. He came over to the school and then, I mean, I thought he was gonna take it, you know, you know, to heart, but I mean, he understood, you know? So when I went home, I sat down and I'm like, I mean, I, it didn't dawn on me till we reopened school, right? Mm. And then I realized that all my colleagues were going back to school and I was supposed to sit for one year. And I'm, so I told myself that, well, I will not waste this one year. Mm -hmm. I will definitely do it something. So that was where it started. I went to Kantamanto. I went to buy, I used to buy, I bought khaki trousers mm -hmm. and some shoes. I didn't know who to sell to because I have never sold before, right? And then I started moving from shop to shop, office to office. I mean, yeah, one thing I told myself at, at that time was, Everyone is a potential, you know, client. Mm -hmm. I didn't know who was going to buy, you know, but I was just, you know, hungry to do it. So I move everywhere. I knock, and that's how come I went to um, TV3, mm. and then um, I got past TV3. I met a guy called Isopeli. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, on that very first day, and then he was like, ah. Who the flavor they realize? I'm like, Me, oh. step, when you <laughs> entered, I said, who the flavor they realize? <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, right? So, I mean, I saw took me inside. He bought a few of my things. And I, I was supposed to come. I went there on Tuesday. Mm. I saw both stuff. And I was supposed to come and take the money on Friday. So, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday morning, mm. I came to TV3 without him knowing. So, he saw me in the afternoon and was, was like, ah, you, you, you they come for your money? I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah. So, we're walking to the ATM. Mm. Ah, everyone... Around the TV3 premises, oh bro, Charlie, you know bring my shoe, Charlie, you know bring my khaki, oh Charlie, that perfume, you know bring, ah. So I was like, hey, young man, you I thought you like told that. me that you, I'm the one who brought, introduced you. I'm like, yes, yeah, so, but I came here Wednesday, Thursday, Friday oh, morning. Wow. It was like, wow. So I knew from CEO down to cleaner within these three days. You know, he was surprised. So I'll see someone, I'll be like, ah, bro, so when you date TV, power, when you the flavor like that, but this is your shoe there, you for make a change up for you. I beg, make a change up. Wow. So that kind of playerful, and I never asked anybody for, if you owed me, I don't ask you, I don't call you. I'll come and say, oh, bro, I'd agree to you, Charlie. Mm -hmm. I'll be. And I mean, you know, yeah. you get it. Though a lot of people owed me and all of that. I met Nanaba, I met Bolore, you mm -hmm. know, I supplied them things, you know. It was an interesting journey, you know. There was fire in me. There was fire in you, <laughs> and there's still fire in you. Always. And then you decided to mix your own perfume. Yeah, so, I mean, it didn't start from mixing my own fragrances. Uh, it started from selling other people's fragrances. Okay. My friend came from US, gave me a fragrance, mm -hmm. and then I decided to sell it, just one. So I sold it for like two weeks, nobody was buying. There was one guy at Metro, he's called... Voila. I learned he's mm. here now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we have to find him. You have to find him, yeah. So what <laughs> about the fragrance and all that now I was I didn't know how to get them. So I went to um someone said I should go to Tudor, I'll get some stuff. I went there, mm. all the things they were selling were substandard and then the image was very important to me. So I couldn't I like delve that. into it. So I rather went to uh, buy the Dubai made ones. Mm -hmm. Th those were very difficult to sell because nobody knew them. It was a hard sell for me. Right. But right now, I had to fall on my ability to convince people, mm -hmm. you know, because I tried the things and they were good. The only thing was that they were no mainstream fragrances. You see, so my decision to sell those ones that were not popular actually led me to know that I can actually start my own fragrance. Mm. Because this was a hard sell. But every single day, I made sure that I was selling about five to six fragrances. Mm. Yeah. That they, things nobody that nobody knew like yeah they were sometimes some of them they were arabics written on it and you know Ghanaians and how their mentality yeah. was you get it and dubai too wasn't that big now it's number one tourist destination yeah, but so people wasn't. are you know exposed to which, their kind which of year are we talking about 
Oh, we're talking about um, 2014 there, about just oh, wow. 2014. Oh, wow. Yes, exactly. Mm. So mm. I started selling all of those things, you know, little by little. And then, so I used to add watches to my friends who bring watches and I'll sell. Hey, so you so, you were like jack of all trades. I mean, I just wanted to lend it. You just wanted the, 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 the cash, the cash, the cash. No, I was like, fact, fact. Uh, I wasn't motivated by the money. Okay. You know, by the fact, but the ability to be able to convince people mm. To actually buy something they didn't want to buy, and at the end of the day, they liked it. You know, so that was what was motivating me. It so it gave me that happiness. Right. Like ah, this man, he didn't. He came to work. He didn't have any plans of buying anything. But you were able to. So I realized that when I talk, people listen. Mm. Right. Mm. And then I wasn't. I was being honest. I wasn't lying. Right. You get it. So um, that was the motivation for me. Mm. But I always came back. I, home, I like your motivation. You know, 